What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Um, so today is Wednesday, and today we're talking about Memphis Regionals. Also, I'm still trying to work with the green screen, which is why you're gonna see like different videos of different like looks and stuff like that. Like right now, it's kind of smaller, and I'm trying to figure out the whole green screen thing that's this back. Um, but today we're talking about Memphis Regionals. Uh, talking about my deck, what I played, what the top eight decks are, and stuff like that. Uh, so for those who don't know, I actually played Vika Bulu. Um, the week before Memphis Regionals, I was pretty set on Vika Bulu. I thought it's I thought it was one of the strongest decks, and I still think it is one of the strongest decks uh, for Memphis Regionals. You know, Bulu, he's got that Nature Judgment, just 120. You discard all your energy, you do 180, but the Choice Band 210, and it has some really nice numbers going into the game. Uh, now this is actually my good friend Blake's Pennington's list. Um, the week before I was telling him, hey, Bulu's a play, and he comes up with this list, and we start playing it, and he, he tells me, hey, I got this really interesting list, so he sends it to me, and I start playing it, I'm like, man, this deck's really good, and so this is the 60 cards we do end up setting on, or settling on, uh, so some things about this deck, so we play 3-3 three, three, Vika Volt, no Charger Bug, um, 3 Bulu, of course, we opted not to play a Mew, uh, we were contemplating cutting a Bulu for a Mew, but we wanted the three Bulus for more attackers. You're going to notice we don't play Super Rod or anything uh, to get them back. We play one Coco. Uh, the Flying Flip is really nice to set up some knockouts. Also, the Free Retreater. Two Lele and a 2-2 two -two Octillery. I think Octillery is a lot better uh, uh, versus Oranguru or, or, or Oranguru, whatever you want to say his name is. Uh, the two Energy Cycler, get back your energies, of course. Uh, two Field Blower. To get rid of tools, one heavy ball, which is really nice with the three Skyla, because with the three Skyla, you can always hit like Skyla for heavy ball for uh, Vega Volt, because that's three treat cost. Full rare candy, of course, to try to get that turn to Vega Volt. And a really interesting card of this deck is going to be Potown. Uh, Potown makes it where they evolve to take three damage counters, and this is actually a really big deal. I know some lists are playing Kikui, but with Potown, you actually get one shot to Situize. If they evolve their Rally to Dartrix to Dartrix to Situize, once Potown is down, they'll take 30 damage. And if you do the whole Bulu uh, Nature Judgment plus Choice Spin, it's 210, which knocks it out, which made it a really, really good attacker. Uh, two Guzma, two N, two Sycamore, which seems very weird uh but the deck is very high it's very very skyla reliant because once you have the vika bolt set up you really don't need to search for cards except for that one grass energy and that's what octillery is in there for uh three skyla of course to help find your, your item cards four choice band we need to find these choice band to do the extra 30 damage uh to take knockouts for those two 10 hp pokemon like lespot and zork and stuff like that uh, two flows to give them the free retreat. I know some lists are playing Switch and some people are playing Escape Rope. I always like the float stone. Just, you know, like always have the tools in the field to give that free retreat. We're playing six grass and five lightning. Um, so yeah, let's go over the decks, what we played against. I'm not going to get too much of a breakdown. I really don't remember too much, unfortunately. Uh, so round one, we're playing against Alexander Holtz. Um, this is actually our second time playing this year. Uh, both times have been at regionals. And he is playing a Buzzwool. Uh, <clears throat> Lycanroc, Regirock, just like straight fighting type deck. Uh, game one, he gets a Parallel on me, and I can't bump the Parallel. Parallel, like, me down to three is really bad, of uh, course, because uh, you can't, like, really bench any Pokemon. He would win that game. He would actually, like, knock out some Vika Volts, um, because when you could do, uh, like, when you snipe a Vika Volt for 30... Uh, it brings it up to like what it brings it down to 120, and then with a strong energy red rock, you do 122 Vigable, which knocks it out for one energy, which is pretty bad. Uh, so that was pretty bad game one, but game two, I would win this matchup when you set up the decks really fast, you're good to go. You can one shot their uh, their buzzwells pretty easily, like they have to hit like rock or whatever. Uh, but as soon as they bench like a like rock, you just goose them up and take a knock on them, which is pretty nice. Take those two price cards, or just knock out the rock rub. Uh, with one energy with the horn attack, you actually one shot a rock rub, which is pretty nice. And I do this a lot when well, during testing. I really did this is the only fighting deck I played all day, unfortunately. Uh, so during testing, I'll do this a lot, and I, I during my testing, I think that we figured out that this had a pretty good Zorg, um, Lycanroc matchup, which is why we decided to play the deck a little bit more too. Um, but it'd be game two and game three would go to time. Uh, Vigo Bulu does take a lot of setup, so if you lose game one, you're most likely going to go to a time. So round one <laughs> goes to a time. 
In round two, we're playing against Charlie Lochner. Locker. Lochner? Locker? Locker? Charlie, I can't remember your last name, buddy. Um, <laughs> but so I see Charlie. I'm thinking he's playing Bulu because he played a Bulu last year. And I'm just really hoping it's a mirror match because I think we had the better deck for the mirror match. Um, but it turns out he's playing Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir is uh, somewhat interesting, especially his build because he's playing Sylveon. And with the Sylveon, he can always use the uh, Plea GX to shuffle off Vika, uh, put our Vika, Bulus, our Vika Bulus back into our hand. Or back into our, yeah, back into our hand. Um, which is kind of scary, um, but I don't really remember too much about this. I know game one, he wins. Uh, game two, I set up, I win. Game three goes a time. I don't know who would win this. I don't know what really happens. Um, but once again, with the, with the Vigabulu, with you kind of like have Poe Town out. You have to make them waste their max potions on the Gardevoirs. If they don't, then you can knock them out for 210, which is really nice making those waste those max potions freely with the Poe Town. And if they do waste the max potion or use max potion, you can then fly and flip and put pressure on that way, which is pretty nice. And so you have a pretty good Guardi matchup, I think so, overall, if you can get set up. Uh, so I would lose game one. He'd win. I, I would lose game one. I'd win game two. Game three would go to time. So now we're 0 2, uh, which is pretty bad because you have to go 6 or 3 to make cut. Uh, so we're already on the struggle bus right now. Alright, so on to round three, uh, we're playing against uh, Sean uh, Cole, who is playing Greninja. And Greninja is water, we're grass. Uh, you can use Horn Attack to knock out a frog at Froakie. And then you can Nature's Judgment probably turn two, Nature's Judgment again, the top of Wilderness, and then you're up four or five price cards, and you're going to pretty much easily win this match. But this is very interesting. Because both games, Sean would Sean would opt to go second. Uh, so he he would win the coin flip, go second. I'm like, all right, this is interesting. Let's see what happens. And he would Ultra Ball for Lele. Uh, Wally, Frogadier, turn one, both games, and I was very scared from the start because we never had the Horn Attack ta uh, attack off turn one, uh, but we still had enough pressure just being grass type and healing us with the top of wilderness was really nice. So we'll take the game pretty easily, 2-0 against Greninja. All right, so round four, uh, we're playing against Ryan, uh, one of my good friends from Arkansas, and he is playing Decidueye, um, <clears throat> Zork, which is what we built the deck for. We, we built to beat this deck. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, game one, I would win, uh, game two, he would win, and game three would go to time, it was really, really close, I can't really remember, I think, no, yeah, it, it was really, really close, if I remember correctly, um, I would almost have the end, but miss the Guzma. Yeah, yeah, I'll abyssal hand for two. If I hit Guzma, I have game, but I whiff the Guzma, and I do not, ha unfortunately, do not take the game. I think at this game, this is one of those games like, oh, if I had like five more minutes, I would have won kind of shenanigans. If I remember correctly, I think my board state was like really good. Like I said, this is a pretty good matchup because you can like one shot the decision wise. You have to waste their max potions pretty early. He did play multiple max potions, but Zora can one shot. It can one shot you, but if he attacks with Zora, you can one shot him back, which is pretty scary. And then you can knock out a Lele or something. Like you have good trades. You have good trades against him, especially with the Octillery because you can draw a bunch of cards while, I mean, he has Zora and stuff like that. I don't know. It gets pretty weird. Um, but I always think with Octillery, you have more draw cards than Zark, especially when you can one-shot the Zarks and they can't one-shot your Octillery because it's on the bench. So, yeah. Uh, so that would be a time. So now, tie. So now we're 103. We have to win out. If we do not win out, we cannot make cut because we have to get 21 points. So in round number five, we're playing against Nick O'Connell. Uh, he is playing... Uh, Vika Bulu as well, so the mirror match. Uh, this one, he is playing a Orangaroo, a Rangaroo. Um, <clears throat> I can't really remember if I 2-0 it. I think I do 2-0 though. Um, do we're able to get set up. We have Octillery. We'll be able to Abyssal Hand first and get a bunch set up. If it's not 2-0, I you remember it was really quick. Uh, so I'm thinking it was 2 -0. I I can't recall. Uh, but with Orangaroo, we have better setup because the Octillery and stuff like that, uh, which is really nice. Uh, in round number, so we'd, we'd win that like 2-0 or 2-1 or something. I think it's 2-0. Uh, in round number six, we're playing against Daniel, uh, playing another Vikabulu. All right, uh, so he is playing the Octillery variants, uh, but he's playing Kikui in his list. Uh, and this kind of does a little bit of things because we have Potent on the list. And one good thing you can always do against the mirror with Potent is you go Rare King to Vikabolt. 
put Poe Town down, and if they evolve into their Vika Bolt, their Vika Bolt has one uh, 20 HP because Poe Town takes that 30 damage. And with 20 with 20 HP, you can take a knock on Nature Judgment. And you have to discard Energy, so you can target down one of their Vika Bolts, take a knock on it, and uh, actually just knock it out with discard Energy, which is really really strong. And uh, I think I would win this game 2-0. If, like, I don't know, I can't, I can't really remember these matches. They, they happen so quick. Like, the Bulu Mirror is so fast because you're just, like, exchanging knockouts. I remember we were talking, and we were just like, man, we just keep, like, exchanging knockouts. so much fun. Like, it's really, it's weird to say that exchanging knockouts is fun, but that was happened. It was so much fun. And I think the game before this one, I would actually set up, like, double Vigil Volt, double Octillery against the Oranguru uh, Vigil Volt player, which was, like, insane. Like, double Octillery, double Vigil Volt. You're like, whoa. You're going to win places. Like, if you ever get double Vika Volt, you're going to win. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're artillery. If you have double Vika Volt, you're going to win games. Um, so, I, I'd win the mirror match twice, which is very nice. I'm feeling very confident about the mirror. I'm like, all right, we could do this. We know how to play the mirror. We know how to be, we know how to beat the mirror. Uh, so, in round number seven, we're playing against Lex D'Andre. And Lex is a really good player. Uh, he actually won the Jason Klasinski Open uh, back a couple years ago. And so I'm really excited to play against Lex, and uh, he's playing Zarglisspod. I'm like, all right, Zarglisspod, let's go. Um, this is what the deck is built. It's built to beat this. Lex um, even goes like, oh, no, I have the bad matchup. He knows it's a bad matchup for him. Uh, so here we go. I'm hype. We're playing this. And uh, game number one, I Lex probably remembers this better than I do. It's like it's only been two days, so I really can't remember anything. Um, I know he wins 2-0. That's the main thing. He wins 2-0 pretty quickly. Um Game number one, I'm very careful of drop like dropping double Vika Bolt. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm fin my bench spot up because he plays Mind Jack Zork, which is very very scary. Um, because on his side of the field, he can't really one shot anything. Like um, his Zork GX only does 120 cap, which doesn't knock out a, Bo a Bulu. It doesn't knock out Vika Bolts. So that's really nice. So if you have if you have four bench, they can't really do anything. But what ended up happening is he would he would use I think he'd use crossing cut GX on my Vega Bolt to knock it out, and then I could have get another one out. I remember he used crossing cut GX at one point, and I think that's what it was is he knocked out my Vega Bolt, and then I didn't have any more I didn't have any more Vega Bolts left. There's actually a picture of this online um, where he would like knock out my Vega Bolt. I wouldn't have anything, and I would lose the game. I know I was winning uh, for sure, but when he knocked out my Vega Bolt, I didn't have another one left, and he was able to target down all my Grubbins every time I put it down. And at game number two, I scoop fairly quickly. Um, if you notice, the deck only plays a 2 2 artillery with no super rod. Um, so, what would happen is he would not, he would target my artillery and gain number two. I think game number one, uh, I think it was game number two, though. He would target my artillery, and I don't have any draws. Um, one thing to easily beat this deck is to target down the artilleries, because once you do that, we don't have any more draw. We can't really abyssal hand to draw more cards, and that is really bad for us. Um, so yeah, Lex capitalizes on this, knocks out the artillery, and we really don't have anything, and I would prize, like, the other artillery, I would prize, like, two or three rare candy, I would prize, like, I think a Skylar's on the two, it was like, my, my prizes are horrible, and I was gonna lose no matter what, probably, um, so yeah, we would take our first loss of the day, so at that point, we're 3-3, three, three, no, 3-1-3? Three, yeah, because we were 303 going into that round, and we lose, make us 313. Uh, next round, we play against. Um, hold on, I got. I can't see his name. I guess Alfredo. Uh, Alfredo. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, but he was playing actually Gardevoir. Uh, and game number one, we'd actually deck him out. Um, I would goose him up. His artillery gets stuck in the axe spot. He wasn't able to retreat it uh, because he had to use so many energies. Uh, because with Gardevoir, they use like max potion stuff like that. You smack in the face. They max potion, attach energies again, stuff like that. They try to goose him up, bring stuff up, take a knock on some that stuff. And they can't really one shot your Guardi, I mean your Bulu, because Guardi needs six energies. And you know it's weird stuff like that. You can retreat, make him waste goose and stuff like that. Um, so game number one, I would actually deck him out, um, which is pretty nice. And game number two, he wouldn't get set up. We would go crazy and easily beat him. Uh, so that was really nice, beating Gardevoir. Um, it, is a, it, is a, it is a tough matchup. Um, if you want to secure the matchup a little bit more, you could play a Kiflarian here. 
to help you out some. You can actually play Kakui if you want to do that. Kakui can now all of a sudden, like, out of nowhere take knockouts. But then your Decidueye matchup is a lot worse. Uh, so it's kind of up to you. And also with Potown, you can, like, make it where you can just Nature Judgment for 180 without ban. And you take a knock on a Zark. So that's in the cool. It's definitely weird with, like, Potowns versus, like, the Kakui um, debate. Um, I know a lot of people haven't talked about this debate, but... I think it's a good debate. Potown versus Kiwi is a kind of a big thing thing right now in my head. Um, and last round, we play against Oliver. Um, good, uh, yeah, good friend of mine. I'd say, cause I'd give him, yeah, good friend. Um, I'm excited because you know Oliver. He's not from here. He's from um, uh, Portland. So he drove, flew all the way. Uh, at first, I asked him if he wants to ID uh, because I knew that 60 points. Uh, was guaranteed, uh, uh, 16 points would guarantee us cut, uh, because at that point I would be, um, 413, so that's 15 points. If we ID, we're 414, um, which is enough for, uh, cut, but unfortunately he says no, he wants to play it out and try to get a better, uh, seating, like top 120 or something like that. So, we, had, we played out, uh, game number one, he destroys me, game number two, I destroy him, I think, and in game number three, he would eventually take the game. Uh, my only rule out near the game was to Guzma up his Octillery. And I remember he kept, like, inning. He just in, and he'd in, and he in, and he just kept inning. And I was like, all right, we got this. He doesn't have any energy left. But he assured that he did have energy, just didn't hit it. And he eventually, he would hit his last energy um, and was able to retreat. Um, Twilight GX, get all the stuff back in the deck, and I would scoop the game. Um, I guess if, like... If I wanted to, and this is the kind of thing about Pokemon that I kind of hate that some people do. I mean, I can't say it's bad because I know a lot of people do this, like take the advantage of it. But like maybe like 30 seconds to minutes after I had conceded the game, time was called. And during game three, I, actually all of our games, we both played extremely fast. We were like, all right, we're going to finish these three games. We're going to make this count. And during game after game two, once I won, I could have like maybe, you know, taking a second here, taking a second here. I, I know a lot of players do do this to try to make time to get that tie and guarantee themselves. But I don't know. I, I just couldn't see myself doing this. I had people tell me that, that like, like, Squeaky, you could have, like, played a little slower. You could have, like, easily, you know, tied and, and got points. And I was like, man, I can't do that. That's just not in me. I just can't do that. Um... So, yeah, we end up going 4-2-3, getting 15 points. There is a shot we can make cut or get top 256, but instead we get 264, just missing 256. Oh, man, so no points, unfortunately. Getting 264. Man, so right now, both of our regionals, we just have too many ties. Like, 4-2-3, I don't know. Like, none of the games I could have really scooped. Um, that I think, like, earlier, uh, out of my three games, um, because I'm at three, I'm at three ties was, like, the, um, I guess maybe the Buzzwell guy, I, uh, during round one, I could have maybe scooped earlier, um, against Charlie, I don't know, uh, game one, I think game one and game two were both, like, grindy, so I couldn't really scoop game one, if I remember correctly, and against, uh, Ryan, that was definitely just, like, some, some bad luck. Um, like like I said, we hit Guzma against Ryan, we would have won, and that would have been totally different. Uh, but yeah, going getting 15 points, and it's crazy now to think that like 18 points is not even enough for day two anymore. Um, just like three years ago, 2014, yeah, you'd get 18 points, maybe 19 points, and you like get cut, and now it's not even cut. That's so insane. Now the game has grown so much and gotten so big, and you have to do so well at these tournaments. And it's just so hard nowadays to do well these big, big regional, especially one with 999 masters, which is what the final count was. So yeah, we played uh, Top of Bulu. I, I wouldn't, like, there were some changes I would make. I would probably cut the Bridget, like a Bridget for a Guzma. Uh, the idea with three Bridges is, you, of course, you try to start with it uh, quicker. And um, yeah, it did work some games, I'm not going to lie. It was nice to hit Bridget turn one without using Lele. Because you do only play the two Lele's and you need a bunch of bench spots. So maybe cut the Bridget for a third Guzma. Because there's a lot of games where I wanted the third Guzma really, really bad. And also, I'd cut a Field Blower for maybe another Po Town. Um, they kind of essentially do the same thing. Get rid of the stadiums. But with Po Town, you kind of guarantee like 
more against like Guardi and Zorg and stuff like that because the Guardi players were playing like two parallel and stuff like that. Uh, so you can counter them easier with the Poe Towns. There wasn't literally Garbodor, so you really didn't need the Field Blower, but Field Blower was nice against like Pokemon who use Fighting Fear Belts if you already did that. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, there's the Top of Boodle Vigable deck. But if you give me a second, we'll, co we'll go over Top 8 decks real quick. Um, not gonna spend too much time because a lot of them are pretty like straight standard or pretty straightforward decks But give me a second. We'll see the top eight decks here in a second All right guys, so here we go once again. We're using the limitless website I mean, what are you doing? You haven't seen limitless website guys Just just go use Limitless website go well, look we're trying to get sponsored by limitless That is the goal of here. We, we want Robin Schultz to give us the AOK -okay that we can be sponsored by limitless That's why we get every if we win regionals we're joining Limitless, uh, but <laughs> okay. So on Limitless website, you can see they have like all top 64 results. No, they don't have all the deck lists, but out of top eight, they have seven of the eight deck lists. And you're gonna notice there is a Zorg Lycan Rock, which we featured on Monday. Um, there is the Azul's deck, which is the Glyspod Garboder. <clears throat> so we'll click that real quick. It's four Wimpod, three Glyspod, three Trubbish, two Garbodor. Uh, none of it's just the Garbodor Toxin Garbodor. It's actually not the Trash Lance one. Uh, of course, it's just done abilities. Uh, three Lele, one Coco, and one Mewtwo. Mewtwo is good for that Buzz Wall. Um, and, it, and, and it's also good against like Gardevoir as well, like Psychic just punishing the Gardevoir players. Uh, but four Sycamore, four and four Goose, but only two Acerola, uh, which is pretty interesting. You'd think his deck would play more. Uh, but looks like he's relying more on the Guzm effect than Acerola to activate the Glissapods, uh, you know, Glissapods first impression attack. There is no um, puzzle time, but in his list, he actually closed four Enhanced Hammer, which is going to help him out against all these special energy decks that are in top eight. Uh, two Heavy Balls to find those Gliss Pods pretty easily, and Garbodors, uh, six Grass, and four DCE. And uh, four Float, of course, to get that free treat, and three Choice Bands. So that's going to be Azul's deck, uh, pretty just straightforward Gliss Pod Garbodor, but really, really strong, especially in this game right now, because a lot of people didn't expect Garbodor. I think Garbodor is like pretty much dead, and Zola said, hey, you know what? I'm going to prove it is still alive, and uh, and it has a hit weakness against like Lycanroc and all that kind of good stuff as well. So in third place and fourth place, we both have uh, Zork, not Zork, Lycanroc Buzzwall. Um, so Pablo playing his Buzzwall Lycanroc deck would make that big real quick. Um, Two to Octillery, two Reg Rock, so it's fighting Pokemon do 10 more damage. Uh, he's playing a high account of supporter cards, four Sigma for and four Guzma. I guess it's the same as the last one we just saw, actually. Uh, but one multi switch. Ooh, getting fancy here. Move an energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active Pokemon. We know Pram did play Energy Lotto. Uh, three Flowstone, three Choice Fan, and three Brooklyn Hill to search your fighting Pokemon. Uh, you're going to notice there is no. There's no Brigetti here. He's just solely relying on Brooklyn Hill to find his Pokemon and Ultra Ball and stuff like that. Uh, four Buzzwall, two two Lycanroc, and like it's just a heavy Buzzwall deck. Like literally, that's what it is. You just try to beat down your opponent real quick by using Buzzwall, using Jet Punch, Knuckle Impact, and stuff like that. Um, there is four Max Luxor to try to put those Buzzwalls really quickly, and that's gonna be pretty much the deck. We're not gonna cover too much about these, like. These are all pretty, like, easily figured out. Uh, this is Mahone's list. It looks very similar to the one we just saw. I think it's actually, like, pretty much the same, except it plays two Parallel City and not three Brooklyn Hill. Uh, there's some small differences, of course, uh, but it looks very similar to uh, Pablo's list. So, <clears throat> you know, just really good. Like, Buzzwall and Lycanroc just proving, like, hey, Basically, like, this weekend proved that fighting Pokemon are, like, really, really strong. Like, we kind of already knew this, but, like, this weekend definitely proved that. Uh, so, this will be fourth place. Ahmed hasn't post shown his list yet, uh, but you got to think it's somewhat similar to everything like that. I know in his list, he plays um, the Reverse Valley. Um, so, his Zorks can do more damage. Uh, they do 10 more damage, which make they we could do 180, um, because with... You can do 180. Wait, on let's Oh, can't see his list. Never mind. Uh, but even if you have a full bench of six or full full setup, you have six, which is 120 plus choice band 150 plus Kakui 170 plus reverse value 180. And there you go. You can do 180 damage with your Zorg, which is pretty nice. 
Uh, we see Raul uh, playing his Zorak Lycanroc deck. We see Ben Potter playing Zorak Lycanroc. And we see Benjamin playing a Zorak Lispot. I like it so much that a Norway and a Mexico player made cut. Like, it's so amazing that other players are traveling here. We also had Gustavo come from Brazil. And we had Eric uh, from Sweden come. And we also had Sammy Sakum uh, coming out of retirement, basically. And uh, make it top 64, which is pretty fantastic. I'm so glad that, like, a bunch of, like... Uh, people didn't make it from outside of U.S. Um, but let's let's look at Raul's deck. It's gonna look very similar to the other ones uh, we saw. Um, we see Raul actually does play a Mind Jack Sork, where the other ones actually do not play one of those. Um, he plays a Buzzwall, which the other ones don't. Uh, his his list uh, doesn't isn't isn't as I uh, guess. Not consistent, but not as tech. It's more techier than the other ones are um, for sure. Um, so we see he plays four. DC, three strong and one fighting energy. And this is kind of scary because if you prize your one fighting energy and your opponent plays Zerker Tree and just starts with it, you can just lose the game. Uh, but three bridge at two Kakui, two Sycamore, Ace Roll, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the big thing about these decks is like multi switch or energy lotto. It's kind of like up in the air kind of thing. And with Puzzle of Time, you're allowed to play these like weird one ups, like the special charge. It's not really a weird one up, but definitely the one max potion and, and the one float stone. Uh, it's kind of interesting, but with four puzzle time, you can reuse those cards if you want to. And of course, two enhanced hammer. Enhanced hammer is so strong in this format right now, um, just because you can see all like these uh, special energy decks. Um, so let's see. There is Ben Potter, which is basically Michael Pramod's list. Uh, Pram, I think if I remember correctly, Pram use Ben's list, and they've kind of changed just a little bit of kind of stuff. I know that uh, Ben played the multi switch while um pram played the inner gelato i think that pram played something else different i just don't know on top of my head right now i think there's one more card that is different let's see pram's list real quick if i can look at it and see the difference uh maybe not maybe it's just like the inner gelato versus like um maybe it's just inner gelato versus the multi switch is what it seems like. That's what the big difference is. Uh, let's look one more time. Okay, not don't click Ben's name. We want to see. We want to see his deck list. Not how much money he made. Come on now. Um, yeah, I don't know top of my head, but definitely the multi, the multi, uh, the multi switch versus Angelato is gonna be the big debate. And we see that is a big difference here. We saw that Pram won with the Angelato. Ben Ben got top eight with it. Um, but I think Energy Auto was, I mean, Multi Switch was played more than Energy Auto overall. And the next thing we have Benjamin, uh, playing the Zorak Glissapod deck. Uh, pretty much towards deck, or towards Zorak deck. It's what it's been pretty much, everybody knows that by now. Uh, but his list does play the One Parallel City. Uh, it does play a Max Potion in the Eva, so it's a little bit different than towards the list. Uh, but still very consistent and, uh, proving that, hey, it's still a very, very good deck in this format. And just proving that, you know, Glisspot's work does have a place in this meta. So, there we go. That is going to be top eight decks. So, I'll leave a link down below to this Limitless, uh, I guess, Charmander Structure page. Make sure you check it out. Oh, man. There it is. There's the almighty uh, Genesect. Oh, baby. The Genesect Bulbasaur deck that we featured yesterday. Man, oh, I, I want Yoshi to push his, uh, the publisher's deck. If you notice, yes, that is a wishy-washy Hoopa that made 11th place right under him. Uh, the interesting th thing about, like, the rest of, like, top eight. So top eight, we have pretty much, like, all, like, the standard stuff besides, like, the Glisspot and, and the other Glisspot. That's two kind of unique decks. But in ninth, we have Force playing Gardevoir. In 10th, we have Harrison playing Genesect Venusaur. In 11th, we have Wish Washi Hoopa. I'm hoping Yoshi would post his deck somewhere. Uh, but as of right now, if you click this, the only person who made cut with it. Yeah, there's, there's Wailers here, but it's not Wish Washi Hoopa. Why is this even the same category as this? That's so funny. Oh, no energy deck out. That's why. All right, guys. But, yep, there we go. Um, that is going to be the top eight decks from this past weekend um i'll leave a link like i said down below where you can see all these different decks that did make cut and guys hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions about Memphis, let me know the next <coughs> the next tournament to come up for america it's going to be the dallas regionals in late J january i think it's like january um 
Uh, hold on, I have the date right here. It's going to be January 26th. So yeah, January 26th is going to be Dallas Regionals. That one is expanded, and I'm looking forward to that. We basically have like a month, um, a month and a month and a week to you know kind of rest for a little while, enjoy the holidays, take a break off, play some cups, but then we get back to the swing of things, playing in the Dallas uh, Regionals. But guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully next time in our Dallas Regionals we can make cut. Maybe not make cut. Just want to get points. I just need points at regionals. That's what we really need. But guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye.